pleased to welcome global entrepreneur, Dr. Min Hu. Dr. Hu is the founder of AP STEM Therapeutics and has been CEO and president since its inception. She has more than 20 years of experience in the fields of stem cell biology, gene therapy, and regenerative medicine. From a scientist first at Stanford University to a leader of an innovative and emerging biotech company, Dr. Hu has accumulated a significant background in knowledge and firsthand experience of clinical cell therapies, as well as a business operation. At AP STEM Therapeutics, Dr. Hu and her team's mission has focused on establishing new paradigms in regenerative medicine and with their breakthrough discovery of adult pluripondent stem cells, APSCs. The company is on a path to eradicate difficult to heal diseases and conquer the challenges that come with aging. Dr. Hu, we're very happy to have you here with us today to hear more about stem cell technology and about your, your company and your team's work and unwavering dedication to overcoming the greatest health challenges of our time. So welcome. Uh, we look forward to your presentation and we'll re-engage after, after your presentation is, uh, is concluded. So thank you. Uh, and we welcome Dr. Hu here to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World. Hello, everyone. I'm honored to have this opportunity to talk about the stem cell therapy and our rev revolutionary stem cell therapy here in the one business world. Our company names AP STEM, a newly discovered adult pluripotent stem cells that we spent 10 years of investigation at Stanford University. And our whole team was from Stanford. We used to work at Stanford. With this new stem cells, we found a new solution for the treatment of some difficult to heal diseases. The presentation here is, um, I'm going to read, like introduce revolutionary stem cell technology for unmet medical needs. Our company, like I said, um, we are in California, in Fremont, California, where the neighbor of Tesla, um, although it's not related. And um, the mission of our company is to development of state-of-the-art stem cell therapies for unmet clinical or medical need. Our innovation is using a unique pluripotent regenerative stem cells derived from adult blood. And uh, we license the IP from Stanford University as well as we have our own IP. And our uh, current stage is preclinical and we are ready to do the new drug application in next year very quickly move forward. So what are the unmet clinic or medical need? So although we have like a, I'm sorry, here's some. So although the modern medicine has made great progress and the quality of human life has been greatly improved, there are still many diseases that challenge modern medicine, such as diabetes, liver failure, heart attack, and the many aging-related diseases. Some of them may have treatment for symptom control. Many of them don't have effective treatments. So that's what we, I'm showing here. Like those are very, like uh, the diseases affect huge human population and also the very large market. And say like a diabetic ulcers, and they're, because there's no effective treatment, people have, once they have this ulcer, it can last for many years, that cause pain and sometimes amputation. People are losing their feet, their legs, and even but eventually their lives. So next slide. So although, um, so like all people know and heard 
like uh, liver transplantation, kidney transplantation. Those technology was invented only in last century, but it becomes very common. But the problem is, although it works, like we know people got liver transplantation, they can live longer, but the donor shortage, it becomes a worldwide difficult because we can't like, we don't have enough donors. So, um, okay. So stem cells bring hope to the medical market or the medical need because the stem cells can renew themselves. Once you get them from bone marrow, from fat tissue, from any sources, it don't depend on the donor, the bodies, and they can be like amplified very quickly. And also the second feature is they can further differentiate into all types of cells. With that advantage, we can fix or repair damaged tissues or organs. That's why people have a lot of hope for this or waiting for the stem cell therapies. And we can see from this chart, the trend is still moving up, rising up very quickly. And right now, stem cells have three like classes of different cells. One is embryonic stem cell, ESCs. The other ones, MSCs and IPSCs. The generally saying this difference is ESA from embryonic immature tissue and MSC from an adult and IPSC are like man made, artificially made cells. And they have all different advantages and disadvantages. Let's see. So this, can you see my mouse? Okay. So these are like uh, cells from embryonic stem cells. The advantage, the, the number one advantage is they are pluripotent. That means they can differentiate into all types of cells in our body. Hope is from here, like they can fix all different damages. And the MSC or adult, uh, adult is called a mesenchymal stem cells. They from adult and they're matured the advantage is they're safe, but the disadvantage is they are, they have less like uh, differentiation direction. And this one is a very famous doctor, Dr. Yamanaka, and who got a uh, Nobel Prize because this new IPS cells. So, and the idea is transfer four different foreign genes into the genome, they can make adult stem cell, uh, adult fibroblast or some other cells become immature, like become pluripotent potency. So like adult cells are not pluripotent, but man-made, they can become pluripotent. So what our revolutionary discovery is we found in adult tissue, in adult, actually in adult blood, there is a small group of cells. Those are small, have never been reported, but they're pluripotent without any gene transformation or any modification, they're there. So we found them, we established a, pla a platform, a technical platform to expand them and to prove they're pluripotent, all this, this work has been done at Stanford. And then we want to know what are this, what the difference compa in comparison with other stem cells and what are the cells, the function of them. The first one is the features like the difference in compare to other stem cells. So those are other like currently available stem cells, like embryonic stem cell, adult stem cell, and then and IPSCs. 
So uh, I make comparisons in the major uh, aspects, say, especially in like a further development related, like the source. It's very under, you know, easily to understand because our cells are from blood correspondingly to other like injury procedure to get embryo, embryos, to get like fat or bone marrows or to biopsy got human tissues, cor cor correspondingly, our, our source is easier and we can get plenty of them. And the pluripotency already talked about in the efficacy, I'll show it and, and some other. The most concern for embryonic stem cell is because it has pluripotency. And if we put them into another appropriate environment, they can form tumors. So in medicine, you can, in the clinical, you can see people talking about teratoma. That is the cells with pluripotency in a different environment, they can form tooth, hair, you know, in a plump together. But it's not an organ, it's not a tissue, but something mixed together. So it's like they can differentiate it out of control. The IPS also has this problem, but, but you know, the technique is always like advancing is, is improving. Um, so there are a lot now, some investment to, you know, to develop this. Eventually we may find a better way to use them. But at least right now we found ourselves at better, they have some advantages. Speaking about further application on human being, because our cells are small and pluripotent. They form adult tissues. They don't form tumors and easy access. And they have fully regenerated. They, they, they have amazing healing power. I'll show it later. And uh, they have some other like a safe, and uh, no ethical issues. So since we are focusing uh, on our uh, project on skin, like wound healing, so uh, we will talk about wound healing, wound care concept. So in, in ancient Greek, there is a famous doctor talking about the wound healing, said, oh, it seems like I cover the wound and God heals it. For, and this concept has been used for thousand years, even to now, most of the surgeons all over, the doctors all over the world are still like to cover the wound and wait for its heal. So the most commonly used wound care way is the doctor will clean the wound and, and then keep it, like put some antibiotics or cover it. So how about the wounds is a large, very large wound or chronic wound. I met a lady last week in Castro Valley, a wound care center. It looks a very elegant lady, but when she took off her clothes, you saw her leg was very large, more than like a, a foot long and, and, and a very large wound. She said that she has this wound for more than 15 years and she couldn't walk well. She couldn't even took a shower, a full shower. So this is very painful and very like suffering and the cost very high to her, to her family, to our society. So say that's the diabetic ulcer that can relate to many different kinds, different factors say nerve problem, blood supply. So if the doctor only covered the wound, you can wait, he can wait forever. It won't heal itself. The healing pattern, if you cover the wound, wait, that is, that is a wound, a, a skin defect. But you wait only when the cells grow from the outside, the surrounding tissue grow into the center that heals eventually. Our te technology like this, we just took a tube of blood and we work on them to activate 
the cells from dormant state to be activated. And then we induce them partially to like guide them how to, how to do and to which tissue. And then we put in to use. So here, our innovation include two parts. One is the cell we discovered. One is the platform, the technical platform to expand them, to control how like them, uh, the, I mean, the technical uh, platform. So our pipeline is um, the first one, diabetic food ulcers goes more quickly and followed, we're going to do the diabetes and so several other, because once like for treatment of the DFU is proved, we can easily like them to do a bone wound or other type of wound and uh, to use to repair other tissue damage. That's our plan. Um, so our investment need is about 20 million. And um, so also here, like uh, we can uh, exist like uh, from here, from the clinical trial one or two, uh, that was, you know, I, I was told that the value of the company will jump to, to very high. And that's our team. And we have very strong advisors and they give us great help. So thank you. That's a brief introduction. Thank you very much. Dr. Hu, wonderful presentation. Thank you. Congratulations on, on all your success. AP, AP STEM you mentioned came out of came out of the Stanford Stardex community, which right. is, from my understanding, is comprised of a number of ventures. Um, and as you said, was part of your initial intellectual property. Uh, you mentioned now that you that you created uh, AP STEM has now its own uh, IP. How important is it for you to you know, move from that, that seeding from the Stardex community kind of onto just uh, AP STEM as a standalone? And, and is there overlap between the, between the licensing uh, as, you, as you move forward? Okay, uh, great. So those are great questions. So I will answer one by one. The first one is we joined the uh, Stanford StarX. StarX is very famous. Uh, it's called a, like a, a business uh, accelerator. And uh, it's very famous in the Bay Area. And I, I think it has more than 2,000 founders now. It covers all different kinds of field, like an engineer and a biotech. And uh, we got a lot of help from them like, in different trainings. Our team was a science-based people who only know science. So we learned a different kind, like license. They organized the seminars. They even match our first seed round investment. They match 10%. So now StarX is within our, you know, the, the, the investment groups. And uh, that's the first one. And uh, we are very grateful to them. And uh, um, the second one is, yeah, we are from Stanford and we joined, we, we started with StarX together. And now I think we are growing mature <laughs> to, to organize company by ourselves, but we still join the activities and some events um, at StarX. And um, so next one is the, the intellectual property. So we licensed from Stanford. And uh, Stanford, because Stanford University encourages their people to, you know, to get a startup, to, to make your dream become realized, like um, become true. So uh, they gave us a very good deal. They don't give us like upfront fee. So we don't have that because the two of the three inventors are in our group. So that's why they give us a very good deal. And they would charge only in the future once we make profit, they ask a very small percentage, like uh, two or um, as the royalty. That's the relationship with Stanford University. And uh, 
The third is what, I'm sorry. So um, the next question is. Yeah, it was just on your, on the IP you're developing on your own now. Um, yes. How, how does that play going forward? Right. Okay. So why we need two or we another one? Because at Stanford, we work from mouse to mouse. So only like we got mouse cells, DPS is to put it into mouse. But in the company, we started with human cells. Now we, yeah, we apply a different IP with human cells to treat human diseases. But still related, but uh, it's different. Okay. No, ter terrific. Close, closest I've ever been to Stanford is the uh, Palo Alto train station on the Caltrain route. Uh, yeah. And there's a hotel across the street from the main entrance that as you walk the grounds, it's populated with goldfish ponds. Or actually, I think it's, uh, I guess it's uh, Kai. So it's it's an interesting, it's about as close as I've gotten, I've gotten to Stanford. That, that's, that's wonderful. You know, when, you, when you're dealing with, with stem cell innovation, um, and one of your slides mentioned it, the adult stem cells, it seemed like it, it generates almost 80% 80 per, 80 of the market. Um, right. How, how, do, how, do you, how, how do you better publicize that? Because again, as you said, there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses on all of it, but it seems like it's been extremely helpful to AP STEM, especially as you're looking at, at your wound care work and your work in diabetes. Right. Um, so um, this is actually, although adult stem cells has less direction, that means it has less potential to treat different diseases, but it's safe. So I think maybe this one takes, you know, because it's safe and people don't, the, even the clinicians, they don't have to worry any set of facts or things. So our cells, although it's very new, it has never been reported, but it belongs to adult because we isolate the cells from adult blood. And why, and people would ask why there is no previous report. Because, you know, the, so many people, so many hospitals are looking through the microscope, why they don't report this. Because our cells are very small. At the beginning, when we reported at Stanford, we got a lot of questions. Because so they ask the same questions. Maybe there are something else. Maybe there are platelets, very small. Because they're very small, they're out of the common range when people look through a microscope. Because in the medical school textbook, the smallest the cell is what's supposed to be red blood cells. And the size is about from six to eight micron. Our cells are half the size, half the size of red blood cells. So that's the first reason, very small. And the second is without a proper condition, the cells die very quickly, they disappear. So, um, so not only because we discovered the cells, also because we set up a proper condition, we can expand them, we can let them grow, and then we can characterize them. Otherwise, they disappear, you can see them. I see. Oh, so, the so the nurturing is very, very important to, to, very to, continue, important. to, to continue to go through. Okay, terrific. Hey, uh, on your, your presentation, you spoke, to, you spoke about the pipeline on the right. therapeutic side uh, and that you're well in well in the r d stage for a number a number of the therapies and now moving towards uh potentially preclinical in some of your wound care and diabetes sections now that that fda uh, meeting that you mentioned uh that strikes me as a novice as a, as a really big deal could you could you just give us a couple of thoughts just on on the significance of that meeting and what it, what it means going forward okay so uh, this meeting was called a named interactive meeting. So in the first step to talk with the FDA, let FDA knows you are, you know, you're doing something and the thing is correct in the correct direction and in need for the clinical and also um, to anything like uh, legally and, and uh, ethically and in the, the way you're doing it. So it's very important to us. Actually, this meeting was given before was given in a pretty large percentage for the applicants, for applicants. 
But last year, because of the COVID-19, I was told this meeting only given less than 20% of our applicants. So um, when, when we filed the application, I was told, I said, oh, your, your work is very good. If the FDA don't give you this meeting, don't be you know, sorry, don't feel bad because they're very busy every day with COVID-19 diagnosis and treatments and all the new, <laughs> those things. But all of our expectation, they were, we were surprised that they, they gave the grant this meeting to us only in two months only after we applied. And so when I asked you know, them, I said, oh, we know you're very busy. He said that although we're busy, we're still taking this important issue very seriously. Because now there are so many chronic wounds that you know is the burden of the society, of the patient and the family. And the number is growing because diabetes, <laughs> because the life change, there are more and more diabetes patients. About 10 to 15% of diabetes patients will develop these ulcers in their lifetime. So that's why. So those are millions of patients there. That's a number for, you know, for, no, that's, that's, suffering for the economic issues. No, that's wonderful. So you're, you're in a very select group then, at least, at least, yes. at least, at least for this, this, this go round as you, as you look forward, you know, you talk about, uh, chronic diseases and unmet medical needs and, you know, healthcare reform and healthcare solutions in this country are always debated, right. have been for, you know, decades, right? If not, if not the whole, you know, century since the beginning of time, it, it strikes, strikes me that, that AP STEM really, I mean, when you, when you look at, uh, at the treatment, at the treatment costs, as you said, some of the, some of the uh, issues with families and, and patients, there's a lot of there's a lot of societal good that that can come from your work, uh, and, mm -hmm. and it really, I, irrespective of market share and, and all of the, those those types of things, just when you look at the potential ways that your company can help, perhaps lower healthcare costs, offer That's alternative uh, therapies and treatment plans, it, it, it really it, it really is wonderful. And uh, from a society standpoint. It, you know, it strikes me that we should be encouraging this type of innovation. Um, yeah. This is really very important as you go through. I really appreciate your understanding. Now, you, this is this is this has been just just wonderful. So, listen, Doctor Who, thank thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Um, your your presentation was incredibly uh, important. The work you're doing is very important. C clearly, you're you're a leading entrepreneur of the world. You and you and AP STEM, you're doing some ter tremendous work here. All of the work that that they continue to therapies and the research and the, and the pushing forward here in this in this uh, re revolutionary type of groundbreaking uh, science is really really very impressive. As you fight human disease, as you help treat chronic disease and and unmet unmet issues here for so many diseases. So so congratulations on all your success. To date, we wish you nothing but the best. I'm sure your future is going to be a bright one as we look forward. And, and thanks for spending some time with us this afternoon. And we hope to see you again soon. Okay. So have a good rest of the day. And thanks. Thank so you much. very much. You're Thank you. Welcome. Take care. Bye -bye.